Hi, my name is Chris Little, and I am the host of The Lifestyle Chase. In 2018, I started this show to have meaningful conversations. I've interviewed over a hundred different people, both in and out of the fitness industry. This podcast is something I'm incredibly proud of. Welcome to season four. Thanks for joining me. Well, like the next little like pivot that we're going to take in this conversation is I want to know the non-fitness things about you. So this can be with regards to like, let's, let's first off talk about like when you begin to travel, where are you wanting to travel and why are those the places you want to travel to? Well, I went over and did America back in like literally just before COVID. Like we literally got back in the country and then uh, things were happening. Um, so, so not that I don't want to go back there. There's definitely a couple of places there that I really want to go back to, but I feel like, um, getting over to Europe and, uh, doing a bit more there would, would be first on our list. So my partner, Mickey, she has spent six months traveling around, uh, pretty much all of Europe and done it all. Um, and she loves it. So I think, uh, experiencing that myself and letting her drag me around and, and go to all those places would be would be first on our list. Um, I have done Spain back then, but other than that, I'm fresh for over there. It's uh, like I said, I'm going to a music festival this weekend. I would love to. Australia is we get left out a lot of out of a lot of the live music because people just can't. People don't want to travel 20 hours you know, yeah. to get here. You know, like bands don't want to do that. Um, so we get the scraps. We don't get we don't get as much as what you would. But um, so that would be a big thing if I went to Europe as well, going over there and hitting one of those gigantic big uh, festivals and stuff like that while I'm over there would be uh, a top of the list as well. So then if we go on to the topic of just activities that you do that aren't to do with training or nutrition, what are three activities that stand out that like you do to round out your lifestyle? There isn't a whole lot. <laughs> They're all related in some way. You just kind of tweak them around it. Um especially out with the restrictions at the moment. But uh, other than that, it's just like playing games, like video games, things like that. That's, it's, it's really my kind of time to get my brain shifted out of, even when I'm like not doing fitness things, you know how like you, you still like kind of have it ticking over in the back of your head. Like even if you're going for a walk, yeah, you're like, this is kind of fitness related. Like it's kind of like GPP and you're kind of doing stuff and you're thinking about content that you maybe got to write or stuff like that. But like when I'm playing uh, games, it allows me to immerse in that and get completely out of it. Like I'm not thinking about anything else. And the same with music. I guess that's why I love them both. Is it like when you're there, you're just in the zone and there's nothing else in your mind. You're just absorbed in it. So they're the two big ones. I, I Everything else is, I would say, it would be a lie if I are. Uh, if I wasn't at least having a bit of my brain kind of working the chipping away at something. Yeah. Well, I mean, those are two meaningful things. Music is a big one because music allows us to kind of like process our thoughts. Sometimes it can get us out of a slump or it can be a motivating thing for us. Um, like when I talk about music, your eyes just lit up. Like what, what's a song? What's your go-to song? If you had a shitty day and you want to turn things around. <laughs> oh, jeez. And I ever took a different playlist for different days of the week, like on Mondays and Tuesdays, I feel like I've got to start my week with a bit of like heavier, like metal type, like get it. I don't know. Something that's just like in the zone, screaming at me, um, amp up, that sort of shit. And then when I get to the later, the Fridays and that's like old outcast and stuff like that, where it's just like nice, chill, like low vibes, like get me ready, get me out of here. Like it's just end my week nice and smooth. Um, during training, I'm all over the place. Like I'll listen to old electronic music from back in my festival heydays, which were like 2010, 2012, back when people, real people came to Australia um, and bring me back to my rave days uh, or I'll get, get like into the metal again. You'll, if you watch my training videos, you'll, you'll hear uh, some much more heavy stuff quite regularly as well. So I'm a bit all over the place when it comes to training. I, I, 
I don't really get, um, I don't really have like a song. You know how people are like before the platform, they step onto a platform and powerlifting, or they'll have the headset yeah. and that'd be like the same song every lift. Like usually I'm the, to give you a, an insight to my mindset here, like I, I'm the guy who's just like, I could be about to take my third squat attempt and we could just be having this conversation and then they'll go like, oh, bars loaded and I'll be like, oh, hang on. I got, I, I just got to do something and then I'll just go like, Get in my zone, do the lift, then come back and continue the conversation. So I'm, I'm, I'm not your, I guess, typical powerlifter when it comes to like getting in the zone and getting slapped and like all that bullshit. Like I'm, I'm, I, uh, I like to just zone in when I need to zone in and then just chill when I, when I, when I can. Well, I, I think that's like- important. I mean, I've definitely observed it just like watching your lifting videos. I've seen like, oh, holy shit, he like makes it look like it's no big deal. Like he must be really like calm and just focused and not yeah. needing to like uh, be completely exhilarated to do, to do something he's dedicated years towards training to do. Like it shouldn't be a surprise that it comes off the ground kind of thing, you know? Yeah. No, no, exactly. Exactly. Like it'll be like even like until I'm right there and I'm setting up. And then I go through my like checklist in my mind, you know, hand here, hand there, find midfoot, do all that, you know, like the little checklist of things that happens and until that moment. I'm, I'm, I'm not really too like absorbed in it. I'm just kind of like, it's just part of training. It's just, just what to do. And then, and this, that, that way, if I train like that on competition day, it's the same as well, which I found, I find is beneficial because like those, some of the bigger, like the higher level competitions, they drag out because they're usually there. There's a lot of people. So they're a really, they're a whole day event, which can be super, super draining if you're constantly like bouncing off the walls and, and like in the zone. You know what I mean? It, I, I find it much more efficient and useful to be in the zone when I need to be in the zone and then just out of the zone, like, like when I, at, at all other times just as as relaxed as i can obviously there's, there's adrenaline and there's fucking excitement and you can't help it to some degree but i try to switch it off and just relax as i can well i mean that attitude will correlate towards your journey with your business kind of thing because you're able to understand like it's it's a long journey and there's no sense like putting the foot on the gas right now if like with regards to like waiting on equipment deadlines or developing people or waiting on like the right amount of business come through the door or whatever the variables may be um being able to like stay cool calm and collected is going to be a big like uh advantage that you have which is cool because then if other people can learn from that example then they can better prepare themselves for their next big steps and their next big goals kind of thing 